Defense Minister Kramp Kalmar, thank you so much for joining us here in mm -hmm. Davos. I want to start in Iraq. What can we do to stabilize the region there? What is Germany looking at doing to help? Zuerst einmal um, müssen wir im, Ira äh, im Irak äh, uns vor Augen halten, dass der IS In Irak, we need to be aware of the fact that uh, ISIS has not been defeated yet, so we have to continue fighting against ISIS. So what is needed is also training of Iraqi security forces. This is a contribution to uh, Iraq being able to free itself of the influence of ISIS. The country is very much affected by the confrontation between the United States and Iran. And uh, because of that, uh, we need to work on the basic conflict and we need to be able to stay with our troops in Iraq. And that depends on the decision of the Iraqi government. Against their will, we cannot continue our Work. But Germany would like to remain with their troops in Iraq if the government says that they want them to stay. We want to stay there because we've made good progress in training Iraqi forces. We made good progress together when it comes to pushing back the Islamic State. But the Islamic State has not been vanquished yet. And if we don't keep up the pressure, there's a great threat that a terror regime will win out again. But we can only continue to stay um, if the Iraqi government wants us to. You've also said that in general you want to a stronger German and European uh, military presence in, in the Middle East and in the world. How do we accomplish that? What is your proposal to do that? Wir sehen ja gerade im Nahen und Mittleren Osten auch die Diskussion von Seiten der Vereinigten Staaten. In the Near and Middle East, we obviously have the discussions on behalf of the United States that NATO needs to take on more responsibility. We're not just talking about Iraq, we're also talking about the situation in Syria. Last week in Berlin, we had another diplomatic attempt to solve the problems in Syria. A great deal of that needs to be backed up with military forces and Germany needs to make its contribution if possible within NATO or within international missions, for example, by the European Union. You mentioned Libya. Could you imagine a German presence there? Wir haben zuerst einmal am letzten Wochenende gesehen, dass well last weekend we realized that it is possible to start the political process in Libya again. This was hard work and we are just at the beginning. Now we need to be able to implement and enforce a weapons embargo and after that we can start talking about something like a ceasefire. So this is not the next step but a step after that and then the Libyan side needs to decide whether that this ceasefire can be backed up internationally and only then Germany will be faced with a question whether we can partake in that. The question of German troop presence around the world is a very emotional topic in your home country somewhere I also live myself. How do you convince Germans that they need to be actively involved from a military sense around the world? Wir sind äh, heute schon sehr stolz äh, in unserer Armee, in der Bundeswehr, aber auch in der deutschen Öffentlichkeit, dass wir bei vielen Einsätzen in der Welt eine entscheidende Rolle spielen. We are very proud of our army and we play an important role as part of various missions, the mission in Afghanistan. There uh, we supply a great number of troops. We cover the northern flanks. We have been active there for a number of years and we've also lost men and women in this fight. We are active in Iraq. We are active in the mission between Cyprus and vis-à-vis uh, -vis the Lebanon, so we shoulder our international responsibilities. What we need to explain in the country is why these operations also serve our own interests. Stable Sahel zone also serves European and German interests with a view to fighting terrorism and uh, fighting illegal migration. You had a proposal on Syria that was in discussion. Is that something that you're still looking at or the fact that now Turkey has essentially moved into parts of Syria that it's sort of a fate accompli where, where does this stand from your perspective Die gesamte humanitäre Situation in Syrien ist uh, nach wie vor katastrophal und wenn wir insbesondere nach Nordsyrien the 
humanitarian situation in Syria remains catastrophic, particularly if we look to northern Syria, we see that the agreement, the presence of Turkish troops together with Russian troops cannot be an ongoing situation, and NATO is of the same opinion. So over the next months, we might have to ask the question, what will be the future for northern Syria, and how can we tackle the humanitarian situation, possible resettlement of uh, refugees that are currently in Turkey, how that can be accomplished, how that can be monitored in order to make sure that there's no exchange of population between the refugees on the one side and the Kurdish population on the other hand that's living there at the moment. I would like to turn to uh, the German budget. You're in, in a rather enviable position in Germany that uh, you posted a budget surplus again, actually a bit more than uh, many people had expected. There's a lot of pressure on Germany to spend more as well, in, in particular because of this budget surplus. We had uh, the German Green Party leader, Mr. Habeck, uh, here on the air at Bloomberg a couple of days ago, and he said he also agrees that Germany should be spending more money. Where do you stand on this? Do you think that ger there is room for Germany to spend more? And if so, where? Um, you know, it's an area, it's something that there's been a lot of discussion about also from outside of Germany. Um. Germany is a country with a very strong economy and we can contribute best to development and prosperity in the world if we remain a strong country. To do that, we need two things. First of all, we need internal reforms to secure our competitiveness. This is something that the Green Party is not so keen on. And then we do need investments in future technologies and in our infrastructure. If we look at our current budget and at the investments, we see that we don't have any problems when it comes to the funds. We have enough money, but we do have a problem with our procedures being too slow, too complicated. And this is why not enough is being invested. This is what we need to tackle first. And obviously, within the government, we are agreed that we do not want to put our surpluses to one side, but that we want to spend them in a meaningful way in infrastructure but also in increased defense spending how do we how do we fix this issue around bureaucracy and that it takes too long to get approvals on things this is something that people have I think recognized for a long time in Germany I know talking to people in Berlin when we look at the housing situation there you talk to private companies and they say it just takes too long to get the approvals to build things we all recognize that more needs to be done how, how do we move that forward mm -hmm. so so that things get done more quickly in terms of the approval process. Also, wir haben zuerst einmal kein Erkenntnisproblem, dass wir zu langsam und zu kompliziert sind. Das wissen wir und das wissen wir schon seit langem. First of all, we are aware of the fact that uh, we are uh, too slow, but uh, we now need to tackle it and we have a good opportunity uh, because everybody also those in opposition uh, that were in favor of more regulation now realize particularly with a view to climate change and climate protection that we need to invest in new technologies in new electricity networks and in that uh, we can achieve and reach a german-wide consensus so if we want to protect the climate then we need to invest more in to protect our climate and secondly i think that we need to stop looking for the ideal solution for the whole of Germany. We are a federal state with various levels and we need to give the various actors the freedom to try out simplified and simple procedures. After German reunification, we did that for certain projects and it worked well and we should do that again now. There's been a lot of discussion in Germany, in particular from some of your coalition partners, about potential reshuffle of some changes within the cabinet. Where do you stand on this? Do you think that this would bring some new impulses to the cabinet in the sense that, I, from what I've read, Chancellor Merkel isn't that interested in a cabinet reshuffle? Obviously, you're the leader of the CDU, so we're curious to hear what you think on this topic. Zuerst einmal müssen wir dafür sorgen, dass diese Regierung, die wir jetzt haben, 
so gut und so dynamisch wie möglich arbeitet und da haben wir First of all we need to make sure that the government we have now works as well as possible and as dynamically as possible so we can improve and this is what we are concentrating on at the moment with a view to the next year election year 2021 CDU need to have a new structure and needs to have new people our chancellor will no longer be available so in 20 2021 we need a future oriented team with new faces and we will put that together during the course of this year this is for me more important uh, than having a short term reshuffle there's been there will be some discussions coming up with the social democrats about how we you move forward in the coalition they obviously are making some demands that they would like to see do you see any room for negotiation there bringing in some new topics or say around minimum wage or around climate uh, that possibly could be added to the coalition agreement that you already have we have zuerst einmal einen koalitionsvertrag in dem noch viele wichtige well, first of all, we do have a coalition agreement which still has a number of important subjects. In the middle of this year, we are expecting the results of an expert commission on the future of our pension funds, which is a huge challenge for Germany. There are many other subjects that we have not tackled yet in the agreement. The Social Democrats have their own topics for our joint work, minimum wage, for example. We have a minimum wage commission in Germany. and. They they are to carry out an evaluation by the middle of the year, then uh, this subject can also be discussed. So this is a regular government work, but it's all based on the current coalition agreement. You acknowledged yourself at the uh, CDU party conference that last year was a difficult year. How do you move forward from that and differentiate yourself from what the Chancellor is doing, for example? indem ich ähm, die Arbeit, die ähm, die Partei vorantreiben muss, ähm, mich ganz darauf konzentriere. Looking at the work that we need to push as a party and by focusing fully on that, CDU in many points need to develop, needs to renew itself. We're right in the middle of this work and with a view to the future, we need to put together a new team and we also need to look at our organization, also how we improve communication during campaigns. It's not very spectacular, lots of things that need to happen behind the scenes, but very important so that at the end of the year, we are in the best shape possible as we enter the election year. As the party leader, do you see yourself as the natural choice to be the candidate for your party in the next election for Chancellor then? As leader of the party, I'm the one with the overall responsibility for the processes and this is what I'm focusing on. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Frau Kramp-Kallenbauer.